I want to try to get me a little time lapse of these storms coming in. They're coming in through by waves, I guess. We, uh, I drove on out here it's about noon, I guess. And uh, this front was coming through. I left the house. I got a few miles down the road, and all of a sudden it just started pouring, pouring, hard pouring. And then there was some hail, so I went and hit under a bridge. <laughs> got off the freeway and went underneath the uh, underpass. And uh, I sat there for about 30 minutes waiting for the storm to kind of die up, I guess. We had a little hail. It wasn't too big. A little, I don't know, marble size, I suppose, or peak. I don't know, three-eighths inch, half inch, peak size, whatever. Anyway, not enough to really damage anything or anything. So. Anyway, I drove out here, and uh, yeah, the yard's kind of flooded right now. So uh, I've got some terraces going down through there, and they, they fill up and everything. The pond is overflowing. The cows are nice and clean. And uh, I don't know. I like rain. I like thunderstorms. And uh, they're, they're neat. As long as they're not dangerous and don't, you know, damage anything. All the boom, 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 you know, raising all kinds of hell. I like that. So anyway, <laughs> what are we doing today? Um, I thought I'd come out, and I know there's not a lot of light in here today, so bear with me. And, uh, that rain is noisy on a tin roof, ain't it? Um, what I'm going to do is I've got the, uh, back room here all painted up from the last video. And I thought today I'd start on that hour shower. I don't know how much I'm going to get done on it. I think I'm going to do some construction parts of it, but not a whole lot of, uh, information about it until later on and once I get everything kind of figured out in my head how I'm going to do it then I'll tell you what it is. So, where's that? I'm going to get busy. Okay, get the uh, shower pan over here need to explain a few things. Uh, like I said, I've got the uh, drain over here. Alright, so I need to explain a few things here. i got this drain uh, thing set up here. There's the, the screen on the top. This is the part on the inside that screws down in. Somebody said, Stan, how are you going to, how are you going to get that drain down through there with this big plate on here? Well, you don't. This goes underneath. This piece goes down through the hole and screws into it. Okay? So, and then you got your different gaskets and everything. So, but I'm not going to leave this whole big piece on here. Okay? Uh, I'm going to trim all this down. So, with that, let me go start doing that. Another thing is, uh, this, the way this uh, shower pan is made, it has all this uh, structure underneath. Okay? And the reason I got this is such a good deal is that all these spins and support. And I had this one right here that got broke off, okay? So they put it in like the uh, the damage section or whatever, you know, and sold it to me much cheaper than rather than ship it back, you know? So it's just that one little fin. Everything else is fine, but it's not nice and new, you know, the way it should be. So, and like I said, I bought this a long time ago and it's just been sitting there in the shop getting all dusty and that. But if you see all these supports and everything, those have to be supported. Well, I've got to make room for this on the bottom. Now, I've got about a two inch gap I've got to fill up. Well, how am I going to do that? Well, I got to thinking I could build a framework around here like this, all the way around with two before. That would raise it up and just, you know, set it on this trim right here. And I thought that might raise it up enough, okay? Build a framework. But that's around the edges, the center wouldn't have any support. And while you're standing on top of taking a shower, you're like, it's just around the edges of support, the center would eventually break and break free, you know, break through, you know, uh, start uh, giving way. So what I need to do is uh, probably gonna get some plywood, and I'll cut a piece of plywood out this size right here with a hole right where it needs to be. For this to sit, okay? And the plywood will support it, and then I'll put a two of fours under here, and then another piece of plywood. So I gotta do some measuring, but I think just by looking at this right here, I should be able to do plywood or uh, two of fours sitting on their side, and that should fill up the gap, okay? So with that, 
let me get busy on that kind of off camera kind of thing and I'll uh, get back to you when I figure out what I'm going to do. Okay, we got the uh, the pan is built. Okay, let me show you the pan here. Uh, what we got is this is the uh, a shower pan. It's a 36 by 36 shower pan, just like you'd have in your house. Bought it at Lowe's, I think. And oh, there it is, right there. Okay. Now, what I have to do is, as you can see down here, I've got it built up. Here's here's the the normal floor space. Let me aim you down just a shade. Okay, now here I've got it built up an inch and a half with uh, two before and a half inch of uh, uh, OSB. And that comes up two inches. Let me see here. Go ahead and measure it for you. I got that, it comes up exactly two inches. Well, the reason I did that is because I measured this, this drain, and if you look on the bottom here, this drain, remember I shaved that off, I had that big plate on here, that, uh, that uh, PVC that I opened up, remember? Okay, that was all, it was all stuck way out here like this, okay? Well, I went and I whacked this off and I kind of trimmed it up a little bit, but I left a little bit of a lip. <clears throat> and what I did is I, I got some more of this uh, two-part epoxy and I put a little bit more, mixed it all up, you know, and then I put a little bit more right down inside here, okay? You know, you, you squeeze it and then you mix it, you know how that goes. Okay. So I put a little bit more in there just to make darn sure there wasn't any leaks and everything and to reinforce it and make it nice and stout, stout and strong. But I built this up an inch and a half or two inches because that's exactly how far it, it stuck out. If you measure the, remember I cut the piece off and then I put that plate on there? Well, if you measure it, it's right at two inches. So I built this up two inches. So this, 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 all these two befores and this will be sitting on the floor for support. All right, now, if I would just put boards around the outer edge and left this floating, so to say, it would eventually, when you're standing on it, 250 pounds, standing on that, it would push down and eventually it would probably start cracking stuff. So that's why I reinforced and put all this other stuff in here I also oh, put a board here that supports the edge. This front, this is the front, it supports on, on the bottom, you know, by, by itself. And on this side, I got a, a one by four in here supporting that. And then on the back, I probably need to put another one by four back here, but I left it off so I can show you. Crack sealer foam, but not, not, let's see here. I didn't use great stuff, okay? I used, in, in place, I used this. It's a harder, it's much firmer than great, than great stuff. When you, when, it, when you get it done, it's still, it's kind of a soft spongy. This turns into a much firmer sponge. Okay, it's much stronger, it's more elastic, I guess, and it's more, I don't know, kind of gluey feeling. It's Loctite tight foam, okay? So I used a whole can of that. What I did is I turned this all upside down and this, just the, the pan itself, I sprayed that foam all around in it. Then I took the board and I laid it down on there and lined everything up. Then I clamped it because if you don't clamp it, that foam will actually expand and push it up and it wouldn't be level anymore. So I clamped it so the foam had to squish out from the sides. 
And then what I had left of the can, I just squirted back in here. I could probably use another can of that and come into the corners here. But I think that's pretty stout. I'm gonna leave that as is. <coughs> All right, now, let's see. Need to turn it this way, I believe. <coughs> Lift it up, and here's the bottom again. Here's my hose. This hose is gonna go from the drain over to the pump, okay? So I'm gonna put this, this on here. Need a little lubrication. Slide it on. There you go, it's all the way on. Now I get a hose clamp, put that on. Let's see, I want it going that direction. We'll put that on. And use the impact. Nice and snug. All right, now I've got these little C clamps, okay? These little clamps. I'm gonna put them in there. Change my fitting out. Put this about right there. Got another one. Put it up about right here. Something like that. Now, I'm getting ready to take it over and actually lay it in place inside the trailer. Sawdust in the air, about trying to sneeze. Uh, anyway, what we got going on here is I got a piece of 3 8 inch plywood and I got another piece of 3 8 inch plywood over here. And what I decided to do was build a like a divider wall, petition wall, I don't know what you want to call it. But let me show you, let me take you over to the uh, treader and I'll show you what I'm doing. Let me set you down right here. Hopefully you can see and hear me. I'll try to, I'll try to speak up. But uh, I got the shower going in over here. I've got the wall from the bedroom is on that side. And on this side, it was just going to be completely open. I thought, now I kind of like to enclose it just a little bit. So I'm going to put this board wall right here, okay? And a piece of plywood is just too flimsy, right? So I'm going to reinforce it with some, ply, uh, some two of fours. Okay, and then after I get it in here, I'll bolt it to the bottom and I'll, I'll put braces inside here and it should be fairly steady. But I didn't want it to come all the way out here because then you're constantly catching it, you know, when you're walking in and out. I wanted it to kind of be shaved down, but somewhat enclose the shower. So when I cut this all out, I cut both sheets out. Let me walk you over here again. So I got both sheets over here. This is the outer sheet, this is the inner sheet. So what I've done, I've put two befores in here, okay? And you saw me assembling them. What I've done is half lapping them, okay? Half lap is where you take a two before and you cut it, you know, down like this. You get the idea. And yeah, there you go. And then you take the other one, you do it the opposite, and then you half lap. So it's the same thickness as a, a, a two before, okay? It's half of a lap. Got it? Half lap. Eh. Lighting's not the best right now, but anyway, there you go. So that's a half lap. Well, half laps work real good, 90 degrees. So I got a half lap here and here and here, but this 45 degree angle that I've got in here, I had to modify a half lap. It's still a half lap, but it's notched out a little bit different. As you can see, I've got it notched 
kind of like that right there. And then this one here is notched, kind of like that right there. All right? And they fit together just like this, okay? Ah, I am not doing very good. I'm trying to look at that little screen on the camera and see if I'm in frame and everything. You get the idea. So I got, and when I try to go this way to get it on camera, it's, the camera's backwards. I'm going to, ah, having issues today. But anyway, I need to take a little bit more out because that's not quite seating well. So I still need to work on this one here. I think it's going to be, well, both pieces, but it, it's not completely smooth here. Okay, it's not, not, so I need to take just a little bit more off. But anyway, that's a half lap at a 45 degree angle instead of a 90 degree angle. And that will fit right in here. So I have these two on the corners. This is the 90, this is down in the bottom corner. This is on the bottom front. This will be the, the 45 degree angle right here. This is the top, and that goes right in there. Half lap and half lap at a 45 degree half lapped and half lapped at a 45 degree. So when I get all that done, I'll probably grab another two before and lay it in here so it gives it the center kind of a little bit of a sturdiness. And then you take this piece and you lay it right on top and you make a sandwich. Well, with the two pieces of plywood sandwiched and everything and all the, the, uh, the two befores to frame it, it should be a fairly sturdy wall. I mean, even though it's only connected at the bottom and on the side over here, but this will be out in the corner, it should be fairly sturdy. So cross your fingers on that, or I'll cross my fingers on that. So let me get this all put together and glued together and I'll get back with you, okay?